Uh, so, guys, thank you for coming again for I've lost track. I think we're at week four now, um, or, or the fourth session. Um, we've kind of jumbled the schedule up again, um, mainly because this program is so new. I haven't written uh, some of the content. So we have uh, we have brought in the wonderful Anna Freeland and Miguel D'Souza uh, to, to lead this session, um, which we were going to do a little bit later on. Um, Nick is also an apology for today. He's got a, um, a major conflict, but he might um, pop in at some point, hopefully, and say good day to you guys. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, Anna, uh, Anna is our data fellow. So she's part of our global data team and uh, is based here in Sydney, formerly at the ABC. Um, and as I mentioned, a, a wonderful singer and musician um, available for... Uh, birthday parties and bar mitzvahs. Uh, sorry, Phil. Sure. <laughs> as long as you have a training <clears throat> session with that, though. Yeah, you do have to have the training with it because she does yeah. have numbers that she needs to hit. So um, there she is. And uh, Miguel Souza, who also has a musical background. Uh, Miguel was a DJ and I think probably does, still does practice the, uh, the, the art. Um, Always just waiting for that one last invitation to do that one great last gig. Yeah. I keep saying last, I don't know. Not that old. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, I, no, I, I, maybe, look, maybe at, at the end of this, Miguel, we could bring you out of um, semi-retirement for that one last go. Yeah. Um, so Miguel uh, is our teaching fellow, so he does uh, the other part of the curriculum, which has been around a bit longer, uh, which is fundamentals for digital journalists. Uh, it's the newsroom tools, and that's what he's going to take you through today. Uh, which is uh, verification, YouTube, some data tools, uh, pretty amazing stuff, as well as advanced search as well, which um, Google search is something we're very, very used to these days, but um, it, the, there are some stuff that's, that's built into that, which is absolutely mind-blowing. So uh, Miguel's going to take you through that today. Sorry, oh, sorry. Were you going to introduce Anna too, or um, uh, would you like me to I get? Just, I just, I just did, but I'll, I can. Um, Anna, do you want me to introduce you? Was that sufficient? Do you want me to go again? No, that's good for me, and I'm happy to get started. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> sorry. I, uh, um, <laughs> thank Two for you the prize of one. <laughs> <laughs> and and look, uh, many thanks. And uh, look for the until about say I'd say roughly about twenty to five. I'm going to be covering a few topics. I'm going to cover them. Very quickly, um, so I will try and share all of the relevant URLs that I have with you through the chat window. Maybe make a note of something that I've skated past and feel free, uh, certainly when I share my details, to follow up with uh, an email or anything like that if you're interested in any, anything that I've gone through. So look, um, what I want to talk today to you about is uh, essentially, uh, we're going to start with looking at uh, Google's advanced search page. I'm just going to quickly open that up. I'm not sure if um, many of you um, use Google's advanced search at all on a regular basis, but it's usually I find a really handy place to start. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, you should be doing that right now. Um, so look, just quickly, and um, I have to confess, I've only sort of become a convert to using Google's advanced search in the last few years because um, it's always this whole idea of sort of speed efficiency. You think, oh, it's just much quicker if I just go to Google's search page and bash away at it and I don't get what I want. But the thing is, is that, you know, um, if you uh, actually have a look at Google's advanced search, you start to get an idea about um, these sorts of fields are pretty useful when it comes to actually sort of restricting um, the kinds of search terms that you use. And in fact, you know what, let me just share the URL with you because sometimes, honestly, I feel like you need to actually run an advanced search to find the advanced search page. Um, it's a really handy way to uh, basically search for uh, anything. I mean, obviously, today, uh, oops, uh, I, uh, let's just see if I do a, a bit of a generic search. Here you can see that's just like our typical Google search. You get all of your usual sorts of results. Now, here's a little tip for you, by the way. If you ever actually want to launch Google's advanced search page from any regular old search, just go to the settings button, hit advanced search, 
and that will then load the advanced search page, which will then mean that you can start to, for instance, if you want to um, you look for specific um, you know, people's names, for instance, if you're wanting to search for, um, uh, let's just say, the mention of uh, somebody's name within uh, your search results. So that's an exact search or phrase that it's going to bring up. And if I go back to the advanced search page, you can also then, for instance, um, which is really handy, limit your search to specific URLs. So you could limit your search to a .com.au if you wanted to, to make sure that you're only returning results which are from a .com.au result. Or indeed, if you wanted to, restrict it to, you know, let's just say your own particular website's URL if that's what you wanted. A really important other thing that you can do is, is you can search for things like particular uh, uh, results in a certain language, results from any region, which in this case actually just means country. Um, also, how recently a piece of content was updated. And this is also a really useful thing because when you search um, for any uh, sort of topic, this allows you to return results as well, for instance. And this is another great tool to use. If you use the anytime dropdown and limit your searches to a particular time range, that's also a really useful way of narrowing down your search and removing any sort of um, extra results. Now, another really handy tool you can use are what we call search operators. So I'm going to now switch to showing you a type of search modifier that we call search operators, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you and share with you 10. That's all you need to know. Um, and I'm gonna go through all 10 of them really quickly. And, uh, and then let's see how you go with uh, perhaps using some of these uh, yourself. So let me just throw in these into, in fact, it looks like I can only throw in a few at a time because there is a limit. So I'm gonna start with the first couple. And, or, and, not, sorry, give me one sec. Or is the last one. Point. So to begin with, you have operators such as uh, a set of inverted commas, which will limit your search to a particular set of terms. Uh, you can also, I'm just gonna pull this away to get some more search operator examples up. You have the and operator, which will in fact restrict your search to uh, a particular, uh, to, to just the two terms that you plan to use. Let me just, excuse me, I'm just gonna pull up uh, another example. Apologies, I've just got to bring up a little side of some syntax that I wanna show you. There we go. Okay, so you should be seeing the right one right now. Now, so what you're looking at is a little summary showing you that a set of inverted commas will deliver you an exact match. The AND operator will include all terms that you're including in your search. The OR operator will include either term. Uh, the NOT will exclude a certain term. And the SIDE operator will target a domain such as .au or .com.au or even an entire website URL, which can, makes it, which can make things really handy, um, especially if you start to use them all together. Now, I'll throw in a couple more into the chat window now. This is a, uh, just a little recap of the most one of the more important ones, which is site. Uh, you've then got operators like in title, in URL, and in text. Now, they're really useful because of what they'll do in terms of limiting your search to particular um, domains. Um, these can be really useful as well when you start to use them in sequence, like you can see with the example there. And in fact, if I th throw that example, so for instance, you can see that why uh, I might be searching for those two on something like the treasury website. So if we restrict our search to the Treasury website with that search, and I'm just sharing that with you. 
I put what we call a string of operators together and I put them into your chat window. And I'll just throw these up on the screen here as well. You can see when I add those, it's actually bringing up results which feature either Google or Facebook in my results. If, for instance, I decide to apply that minus operator to Facebook, it's only really going to bring up Google results. And again, because I've restricted it to the Treasury website, there's lots of mentions of documents and things like that. Now, I'm just going to get rid of this part of it. If Nick was here, he'd be um, uh, concerned, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's yeah. why I apply the minus to Facebook. <laughs> um, it, it's so that's I find that a super powerful one, Miguel. And I was um, just um, using this example in training this morning of uh, somebody in my train in my um, the the, uh, the farm training I did last week. Wombat, and I I didn't know where Wombat was, so I I punched Wombat into Google, and obviously it brought up wonderful photos <laughs> of furry animals. But when you use wombat m minus uh, animal, it then brings up the, the town. So it's such a small little thing, but it can do amazing things. Yeah, that's right. Because, I mean, what it will, um, and, and, and again, like, for instance, if you, uh, let me just quickly, it can be really handy if you are searching, say, for instance, for, you know, just a particular mention. Let's just say um, Jeff. You want to broadly write from the top. Whoops, how about I spell it properly? You want to see if Wangaratta appears in any single document in it on the Treasury website. Well, at the moment, no. But let's just have a quick look if we can drill down a little further. And you can see there we've got um, door stops, all sorts of different bits and pieces actually featuring, which have come up either with, by the looks of things, Wangaratta or Wodonga in the text. Um, so it's a good way to sort of deep search into things. If, for instance, as well, uh, let's just say if, if what you were looking for was more something around um, in, in the way of figures or facts or things like that, you might want to try something like file type operator. Now, I'm going to go back and show you uh, a little example of that, but let me just quickly throw that into your chat window. I've got three more operators to share with you. If you... Now, um, file type is a really useful one because, for instance, you know that uh, many government departments will produce documents as PDFs, for instance. So let's just try a PDF search for the word Wangaratta. I'll tell you one thing. This is, I've been introduced, thanks to this job, to the concept that I could be a robot by, n by nothing other than Google itself. But you can see here it's brought up all sorts of different documents. Um, things for, uh, relating to the Rural Housing Network, uh, minutes from Treasury, retirement income review report. Now, if you know what you're looking for, and I know you do, uh, so say, for instance, if you were looking at Wangaratta and you were interested in the subject of retirement, you might filter for uh, Wangaratta in the text of a document plus the retirement feature. Um, I remember from memory, I think you guys had a bit of an interest in um, stuff like uh, application permits and building permits from your local council. I've got a little bit of fun I've been having for the last few months. I've got to show you actually, Jeff, uh, specifically with uh, Wangaratta stuff. So let me actually, I might even just uh, jump to that. I want to show you a little example. Now, this is... Uh, Oh, and by the way, this is, I was just trying out a really cool tool that Neil was telling people about earlier today um, called Workflowy, but I'll leave that to him. So I'm going to find Wangaratta City Council. Okay, so here's their URL. Uh, it is wangaratta.vic.gov.au. So I'm going to grab that URL, okay, um, because I want to show you what I can do with it. Next up, let's go back to our Google search operators page back here. Now, instead of Treasury, I'm going to pop that wangaratta.vic.gov.au uh, URL in there. Now, I'm going to search for anything with the word uh, application or permit in the title, Jeff. Permit? I'll wait for you to answer, but I'm pretty sure application... Or permit might be a good 
Permit, permit would be fine. Yeah, permit? Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let's see what we get. So you can see we've got application for excess animal permit, application for building permit, submissions. So this is bringing up uh, a lot of the forms that are on their website that is relating to various sorts of um, applications for things. So for instance, let's just say, um, what if I did a little search for maybe an in-text search for the phrase tree removal. And you can see it's filtered it even more. And now I'm into a, a different URL, but it's still drilling into wangrata.vic.gov.au, which is we've got applications for planning permits. So these are applications made by people. You can see in some cases it has brought up some ads, but that's okay. Um, so what I've got now, and I'll share this with you, by the way, is I've got a really good uh, search operator string, which I can use to search for stuff. Now, we all know you don't have the bodies, you don't have the time, you don't have the people to sit here and write complicated search strings every minute of every day and then run them through Google and do stuff with them, which is why we'll take that search string and we'll pop it in to Google Alerts and let Google Alerts do the work for us. So while it's loading, you can see here, I've got the create and has anybody here actually used Google Alerts, by the way? Yeah, I, I, um, I used to use it in the simple way, which was basically I would write, you know, fairly big news terms, you know, perhaps so. Oh, somebody's raised a hand, Tyler? Is that you? Where are you, Tyler? I've used Maybe? it before. Yeah, you have, okay, cool use it um actually to uh my sister went overseas a couple of years ago and i uh put the alerts on her the town that she was traveling through um just to keep across the news good idea that's a great idea actually man that is fantastic um yeah so look i mean you know it can be used for a great application like that actually that's a good one to keep in mind um and you can also and this look tyler this might help you next time a family member goes overseas okay so this might lead to even better alerts for, for where their whereabouts but or if they're going to multiple cities you can certainly do that now so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take my wangaratta uh search string and i'm going to pop it into google alerts and you can see already it's telling me that there are pieces of content that match my um, alert. Okay, and my alert, just to be absolutely clear that everybody knows what they're looking at, is looking at the Wangaratta, um, a local government website. It's looking for any document that has the word permit in the title, but it has uh, tree removal in the text. Now, I could have used a set of inverted commas just there to capture that ex exact phrase, but I'm a being a bit, a little bit, Lucy goosey about it. I'm going to hope that maybe I'll pick up a few other things with it as well. And then, of course, I'm only looking for file types of, oh, sorry, I'm only looking for PDFs because I know that that's the format that they have. So I'm going to hit create alert. Now, I'm going to go back into my alert and I'm just going to modify it one way. I'm going to select as it happens so that every single time a document goes up on the Wangaratta website, which corresponds to those details, I will get an alert. Uh, and then I can go and download it if I need to, right? Um, anyway, I'm going to jump from there now, unless anybody has any questions uh, at, at this point, because I'm just looking at the clock and I know that uh, we want to make sure that you have time to hear Anna, because what she has to say is absolutely gripping. So. Um, so you can see there, there's my example, for instance, it's looking at notices of public meetings as well. So what I suggest is if you guys are interested in this, please contact me and I'll do, I, I can organize a much more in-depth sort of session about this and also supply you with a lot more um, um, uh, doc documents about it to help you sort of learn what we're looking at. Anyway, good way to, to, to use it is basically uh, looking at using Google Alerts. Now, I'm going to now jump to a little bit of verification. And as I say, time is really tight. So what I want to do is I'm actually really only going to just do a real little skate through some of these tools. Now, what you're looking at right now is, is you're looking at a tool called the Revi Reverse Image Search Engine uh, in action. It's um, 
it's what uh, I will, um, I'll, I'll show you uh, sort of now in a sense. Uh, let me just quickly pull up uh, a little document now. The Revi search, re reverse image search engine works pretty much as you can sort of see. It's essentially a Chrome desktop extension, which I'm just going to grab the URL of. And I'll share that with you. Now, as with most Chrome extensions, you simply hit the Add to Chrome button uh, and add that to your, and apologies, I'm just going to throw that in the chat. Uh, you simply add that to Chrome. And then every time you uh, mouse over an image uh, that you would like to check, uh, you then you have your choice of all search engines. And the value in being able to search with all search engines is that you essentially can um, complement the, the shortcomings of each. Google and Bing aren't the best image search engines there are by a long shot. Yandex, however, which is a Russian-based AI search engine, is. In addition to Yandex, you get to use a, a tool like TinEye, which also uh, is extremely powerful and really good for copyright matching. Now, again, um, because of all of the stuff that I want to show you, I'm, I'm going to skate past this into another tool. But I'd really like you to get in touch if you would like to know a little bit more about how to use that. Um, also, we have a, this uh, tool, which is called um, Jeffrey's Meta uh, Exif Data Engine. Now, uh, you may know that digital cameras, uh, mobile phones, et cetera, uh, will leave a digital uh, data fingerprint of sorts. That's my shorthand, by the way, on your images. And that's known as EXIF data. And that stands for Exchangeable Image File Format Data. And that's an image standard that determines all sorts of metadata in images that people shoot. Now, a, a tool like this, which I've shared the URL for you, with, with you for, will in fact um, tell you all sorts of data about images that have been uploaded to it. Now, it does rely on one crucial thing, and that is, is that the image is a raw image outputted from somebody's phone or camera without any editing. Um, and it does have shortcomings, which and chief amongst them, which is um, that you can modify uh, the EXIF data of a file, uh, but, um, and, and that can be undetected in some cases. So we're going to press on a little bit. Um, this is another fabulous tool called SunCalc. Again, I, I wish I had the time to uh, go through it with you. Uh, look, I tell you what, I might actually just show you a little bit of it um, because I know I have it loaded up with some useful detail. Uh, and I can tell you, for instance, right now, what you're looking at is, in fact, the latitude and longitude for uh, a spot just outside uh, Brunswick train station, believe it or not. Um, I know this because I've entered the latitude and longitude myself earlier today. And that is it over there. So with this tool, do you see this little, let me just zoom it up a little bit, OK? Uh, this little tool you can see down here, that little black bar, is in fact an indication of where the shadow is thrown at any particular time of day. So for instance, up here, you can see over here that currently this is looking at the 15th of March, 2021. Uh, so that's today. But let's just say, for instance, what if I wanted to know uh, back in January, let's say uh, January 1st, at roughly about uh, 3 p uh, 2 p.m., where a shadow would have been thrown at the same spot. Well, I take that slider, I move it back to 2 p.m. You can see my date counter is set to the second of, to 1st of January 2021, and you can see there at 2 p.m. a really small shadow. I'll just zoom in a little bit really small shadows thrown. If, for instance, uh, perhaps I wanted to sort of see, um, now, if I wanted to see whether uh, the, um, what time the sun set on that day, you can, again, just simply calculate the date you want, and this will tell you when the sun set at that location. It's a brilliant tool, really good for verification. And look, I'm going to share this with you, because what you can do is you can go straight into it and you can modify it for perhaps maybe, you know, um, outside your place at home. And you can determine using that uh, where the shadows are thrown and see how that matches what you're doing. As I say, um, I could do an entire 
one hour workshop just on SunCal. Uh, it, it's a really cool tool and really fantastic way to um, verify pictures. Now, I will press on unless anybody has any questions. Um, that uh, again, that's uh, let me just quickly jump to this is going to be uh, my last uh, let's see I think I've got about 10 minutes um, I I'm just going to take a quick drink and have a breath and I want to tell you about probably about the most exciting tool I think I've, I've come across in the time I've been working with Google and the, and the thing is is that they, they throw a lot of really cool things my way but I've got to say pinpoint is absolutely my favorite favorite thing ever um, and let me um, I'm just going to jump to it because I want to show you um, some of the stuff I've been doing with it now what pinpoint is is it's a database analysis tool and it's um, really cool because it allows you to upload all sorts of documents to it you can upload uh, word docs PDFs excels you can upload up to four gig in a single file um, to put it in perspective I uploaded a, a 21 meg PDF and that was 7,000 pages. So you can upload lots and lots and lots of stuff and it doesn't stop at just Word style documents. So it doesn't just do PDFs or Excel documents or Word docs. It does um, pictures, uh, JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs. It can read text in images. Uh, it can transcribe audio. So let me show you what it does. Um, I'm going to show you a few, I'm going to do this by showing you a few examples. Um, you might, I'll start with that little um, Wangaratta example I was uh, showing you before. Um, I, uh, sometime last year, I did a session with the, Jeff and his team at Wangaratta and he talked about uh, how they monitored local councils, etc. And then the, the idea stuck in my head. And so what I did was I wrote a, a, a Google search alert to look for applications from city of Wangaratta. And then I accumulated these over a period of, of, of you know, maybe a, a couple of weeks, and then I dump them all into Pinpoint. Now, first thing I want to show you is look at how Pinpoint filters for people's names. So it's extracted all of these names. Now, I will say that this is artificial intelligence in action, and in some cases, some of these names were a little bit wacky. Uh, you know, it in, and it is picking them out without discrimination. So don't even ask me how Theodore Roosevelt gets in there but he's in there. Uh, and in fact, Jeff, you probably know the backstory. It's a significant tree, so it's obviously related to him. And there's gotta be a good story to that one, I tell you. Um, you can see also that it's filtered by organization. And again, these are only the organizations whose names turn up in only the permits that I've downloaded. Finally, um, you can see also it's filtering for uh, locations. And clearly, obviously, you know, I'd only be concerned with local streets in Wangaratta if I was if I was working there. Um, so you can see what it's already done, which is kind of cool. Now, so for instance, um, what I you can also search using Google search operators. So for instance, if you search for tree removal, you can see the phrase turns up in these documents. Okay. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Which, which department or which organization turns up the most in applications for tree removal? Well, it's like Vic Roads, the Department of Environment, Land, Victorian State Government, Country Fire Authority. I mean, I guess they're kind of predictable, but you can see how the cross-referencing can work over there. And this is for a sort of fairly, fairly normal kind of news monitoring style exercise. I guess you're not looking for breaking news. You're, you're, you know, you're delivering really important news people can, can use by monitoring people's um, um, you know, building uh, our council applications, et cetera, and stuff like that. I want to show you a couple of other applications too. Uh, this is the entire five volume, uh, God knows how many PDF set of the reports into the Royal Commission into Aged Care. Now, to put this into perspective, it took me twice as long to individually download each document than it, it did for me to batch upload the lot to pinpoint. To batch upload it to Pinpoint took a couple of minutes, and in those couple of minutes, the filtering was already working. So now I already have all of these names. Now, for some of you working in regional areas, um, you know, aged care stories, aged health issues, these are a big, big issue. And so, and also, you've got 
you know, providers are some of, of the bigger employers in regional centers, I know, from, from in some cases. So you can see here, uh, you know, it's filtering all the organizations that are mentioned in the Royal Commission into Aged Care Reporting, a report, I'm sorry, uh, and finally, all the locations. And again, if your location isn't in there, search for it, but I'd be very surprised. So um, I'm just going to, I think I've got about five minutes more, so I just want to show you a couple more features. I really want to show you um, two things. One, audio. Now, this is what um, this is what it can do with audio. Um, this is the Gough, Whit Gough Whitlam's dismissal speech. Actually, you know what? It's too short. I'm going to get something bigger. This is, <coughs> I'm sorry, an entire 45-minute program um, for, of This Day Tonight, uh, which went to air at the end of Gough Whitlam's first year of um, government in 1973. It was a WAV file. Now, I will tell you that you can upload a WAV file as big as four gig. Uh, and that obviously, you could, you know, upload any number of four gig files, but um, any single file needs to be four gig. I think this was, this didn't even scratch that. Now, what it's done with it, it's transcribed the entire document, but just in case I don't trust its transcription, and it is AI, and as you can see, there's a lot of God up here, and we know Goff often gets mistaken for God. So how about I check it? Now, good evening and welcome and good day. See, this will actually allow you, it will clip up your individual segments of uh, your trans, your audio, and then break them up into small clips and then add the transcription right next to it. And then when you're done, you can simply hit on the three buttons and either download the audio or the transcript. And if you're wondering, well, what I use is video, don't worry, just strip the audio off the video using a converter and then you can run it through this. Um, if you, or you can, if, you're, you, if your video is on YouTube, you can simply strip the MP3 as audio off that. Anyway, I'm gonna press on because I wanna show you just a couple more things. Some of you may have paper archives, which often make for great, great, great stories because people love reading old stuff uh, um, now, what do you do with a paper archive? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of little examples. Um, a friend of mine has a Flickr where he loves to take photographs of old newspapers and stuff. Um, uh, and he and and so I ripped down a few images and I, I threw them up onto Pinpoint just to show what it can do. Now, I want to show you here. You might see on on my list here. Um, I'm going to show you that there it mentions uh, Pope Pius. Now, if I click. On Pope Pius, you'll see that his name comes up on this PDF. I'll just enlarge it and I'll click on that. And you can see that the PDF is, in fact, a Sydney Morning Herald from 1958. And it's picked up that text there. See that? All over it. It's even picked up variations where Pope Pius appears without the Latin numerals, it still picks it up. Now, I'll do one more little thing. Sometimes I feel like I'm showing off, but it's really not my tool, so it's okay. Um, I'm gonna just search for the word forecast. Oops, the reason why is because I know it's gonna turn up on that same page, but look where it's turned up. I mean, I can't read that with the naked eye on my screen, but Pinpoint's picked it up. Um, one last one, I promise, before I hand you over to Anna. Um, I, um, on the National Library of Australia's website, I found these really cool World War II era Japanese maps of the world. They were kind of like a way of, you know, updating the Japanese people and war command about how the war was going. And you can see Australia looks kind of cute down there, doesn't it, with the little sheep and the emu and stuff like that. We've even got, they even mentioned things like turtle sanctuaries and stuff. But anyway, I want to show you, if I go back to my index, it's picked up a mention of the Andaman Islands. So what if I click on that? Well, if I click on it, it's actually picked it up in the Japanese text, translated it to the English, and there it is. Um, so it's, I suppose, what I'm trying to illustrate there is um, there are so many fantastic uh, instances you can use Pinpoint for, uh, but I guess it's just limited by your imagination. I've got other examples there where I've used data scraping tools to pull down the entire content of things like the Wall Street Bets Reddit thread 
and I've run that through Pinpoint, and you can find out mentions of people and places. Uh, it really just comes down to, I suppose, what your um, what your application is. And I guess um, my last thing I will say before I hand you over to Anna is, is, look, if you are interested in more Pinpoint, please drop me a line. If you've got a special project you want to talk about running through it, yeah, just get in touch. That sort of stuff's fun for me, and I'm happy to keep confidential about your special project until, of course, you break ground with it, and then I'll tell everybody about it. Um, but look, now it's time for me to hand over to Anna, and thank you very much for your time. Thanks for that, Miguel. Um, I'm going to take over from presenting, uh, if you let me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. There you Sorry. go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, just before we get started, I, I wanted to um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we are virtually gathered. Um, where I am, it's the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, so as Neil said in his intro, um, although he focused mostly on my past life as a music theatre performer, <laughs> I am the Trends Data Curator for Australia uh, and more broadly the Asia Pacific. Um, my job is effectively to look at what people are searching online via Google, um, to clean and analyse that data and then share insights with journalists who can use it in storytelling. Um, today I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of Google Trends so you can access and interpret search data for yourself from the comfort of your working from home office. Um, so what is Google Trends exactly? Well, it's a publicly available real-time data set which samples the billions of searches that are performed every day via Google search. The public trends tool is more or less designed for journalists, but it can be used by anyone and for a range of different purposes, uh, whether it's to gauge community reaction to a major event, to assess how cultural trends have shifted over time, or uh, simply to tap into the zeitgeist and get a sense of what people are curious about. Now, the Trends microsite, which is linked on screen there, uh, allows you to explore an unbiased and largely unfiltered sample of Google searches with which you can measure interest in different topics over time and by location. There are two samples of search data that can be accessed. The first is real-time data, which is a sample covering the last seven days up to roughly the last couple of minutes. And then the second sample is long-term data, which is separate and covers, separate but overlapping, I should say, and covers 2004 up to roughly the last 48 hours. Uh, to use trends, it's, it's helpful to understand how Google search works. Um, forgive me if you already know the ins and outs of this, but I, I feel like it's useful to cover um, just in case. So when you search for something on Google, you're interacting with what's known as the knowledge graph. And this is basically a giant database storing all the information sources hosted on the internet, and it describes the relationships between them. So the knowledge graph sorts search terms according to topics, and this is done automatically using natural language processing. Uh, the analogy I kind of like to use with to explain how search works is that it's basically like a very efficient and knowledgeable librarian. You say to her, hey, like, I want to learn about ancient civilizations. Have you got any books on that? And the knowledge graph, or in this metaphor, the librarian goes away and brings back a bunch of books on the Aztecs, the Romans, the Persians, and these are like your search results which you can then peruse at your leisure. Um, crucially though, in terms of how this is then interpreted via Google Trends, the language you use to search and the results you then choose to interact with help to consolidate what we call clusters of search terms against different topics. So the more a topic is searched, the more specific and relevant the results will be, and in turn, the more robust the data filtering through to trends becomes. 
I mean, understanding how search terms are aggregated to topics in this way is really important. Um, when you use the Google Trends microsite, you'll notice that you can either enter a search term or a search topic. And I'll explain scenarios where you would use one over the other shortly, but this is the fundamental difference. Search terms show interest for the exact word or phrase in a given language. Topics, on the other hand, are lang language agnostic and they capture clusters, those clusters I referred to before, of search terms which share the same concept in any language. They also account for spelling variations, acronyms and misspellings. Um, and so for this reason, they are more reliable than search terms for the purpose of trends analysis. Um, a couple of other important points to note up front, the data is anonymized, so no one is personally identified. We don't know who is searching, only what they're searching. The data is also normalized by time and location. So each data point is divided by the total searches made within those parameters, so the location and time range, to show a topic's relative popularity. And this makes comparing interest between topics and between different locations and periods of time easier. And if we didn't do that, the places with the highest search volume overall or the biggest number of users would always be ranked number one, which makes it kind of redundant for comparison. Um, the resulting values are then indexed to 100. What does that mean? It means the values are scaled on a range from zero to 100 based on how popular the topic is, proportionate to all searches on all topics. So search terms with a very low volume appear as zero, um, and the term with the highest volume overall will appear as 100. Um, that's an important point to just soak in because often people get confused and think it's showing percentages, it's not. Um, so to that end, different regions that show the same search interest value for a term don't always have the same total search volumes. Um, before, uh, actually just conscious of time, I was gonna say before we go on, does anyone have any questions about this? Because it is a point that I find people get stuck on, especially the indexing. Um, but if you if you do have any questions, hold them and we'll come back to it at the end. Um, so I'm gonna run you through how to use the public trends tool. Um, some of you may already know the basics, but I'll go over them and um, hopefully have time to share a couple of handy tips at the end. Um, if you wanna follow along, the uh, the trends URL is linked on screen, trends.google.com. Um, when you get to the landing page, the first thing you do is enter a keyword. Um, as I mentioned before, we recommend using topics instead of terms, generally. Um, you can select a topic once you've typed your keyword into the search bar by clicking on the relevant suggestion in the drop down box. Um, there's an example of that on screen there. So sometimes the suggestion will say the word topic, other times it'll describe a sort of umbrella concept for whatever the keyword is. So in this example on screen, we've got coronavirus and the sort of umbrella concept is virus. Um, but I guess as a rule of thumb, anything that does not say search term is considered a topic. Um, as I said, topics will generally um, generate more robust results. The only time I would probably suggest using a search term instead is if it's a relatively new concept or something that is unlikely to have been searched much in the past. Um, an example that comes to mind is um, like last year when the Netflix series Tiger King was trending, um, there was an existing topic for tigers and for kings, but not Tiger King specifically. And so that week, um, both those topics were trending, but actually what people were searching for was Tiger King, the Netflix series, not tigers and kings. Um, so yeah, just I think use your judgment on, on those ones. Um, once you've selected your topic, you can then filter by location, time, 
category and Google product. For Australia, you can see data aggregated at the national level as well as state-based data. Um, that's, so that's the location time frame. You can compare between countries as well um, by selecting worldwide. Uh, the next filter we have is time range where you can view data in real time for the past hour all the way back to 2004, which is when the trends data set begins. Um, it's important to remember, as I mentioned earlier, that there are two different data sets at play, real time, which covers everything in the past seven days. So in that list there, we've got past hour, past four hours, past day, past seven days. Everything else falls into the long-term data. Um, and yeah, I guess the thing to note about that is they do have like a crossover, um, but if you're looking for something that's happened in the last week, you want to use the real-time data set. Don't use like the past 30 days and try and extrapolate. Um, the first widget on the trends page, um, once you've entered a keyword, it'll update and refresh and you'll see um, a line chart will come up. Uh, you can hover over the trend line to see different values. Um, something that's useful to do once you've entered your keyword is to adjust, like have a play around with the date range to see how interest for the topic compares over time because um, it might look like there's a big spike this week, but then in context, you know, it might be a very moderate spike compared to interest over time. So if you look back further, say the past 12 months or um, past five years, you can get a sense of how people have searched for it um, over a longer time span. Um, I'm going to just skip that. Ex uh, no, actually, that's a useful example. Hold on, I'm just going to bring this up. Uh, the other thing you can do, oh, if my computer will unfreeze. Um, <laughs> hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 right. So um, you can also change filters in um, in trends, and and the way you do that is by entering. Once you've entered one topic, you can enter up to five actually. But here I've entered a second one. Um, it's the same topic, uh, and what I've done is I've changed the locations but kept the time frame the same. Um, and how you do that is by selecting the three little grey dots at the side um, and you can change the filter um, here. So there I've changed the geography but kept the time frame the same. You can do the same thing in reverse, keep the geography the same but change the time frame. So say if you wanted to see search interest for coronavirus in Australia, um, 2021 compared to 2020 thus far, um, you could do that as well. Uh, moving right along. So to determine how highly searched a topic is, it generally helps to compare it with similar topics uh, or with frequently searched terms. Um, as I said, you can compare up to five at a time. Um, the example on screen, uh, includes the weather and news because those are both highly searched topics and have been highly searched consistently over time. So um, if you're looking at a, at a topic and thinking, oh, gee, this looks like a this is a big trend um, and you want to have a bit of a benchmark as to whether it's like really cutting through, um, comparing against the weather or news is usually uh, um, a good metric. Uh, the next widget you'll see under the line chart is a map um, and you'll see data broken down by region. Um, in the Australian example, it's state and territory level. Um, you can also click through uh, where it says sub-region and toggle to city level data. Um, similarly here, the values are displayed on a scale from 0 to 100 where 100 represents the location with the highest proportionate interest in that topic for the time range selected. Um, again, a reminder that a higher value here does really mean a higher proportion of all searches, not a higher absolute volume. So uh, to, I guess, um, explain that in more detail, a tiny region or country where, say, 80% of the searches for news 
um, sorry, that has 80% of the searches for news, um, will get double the value of a larger country where only 40% of the searches are for news. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, both the map and the line chart can be embedded on any website and you can download the index data to use with other data visualization tools by clicking on the embed link, which is um, the two little um, opposing arrows um, in the top right. Finally, at the bottom of the page, you'll see two list widgets which feature related topics and related searches or queries. And these show what users have been searching in addition to your chosen topic. You can sort these lists by the following metrics, top or rising. Uh, top effectively are the most popular search terms or the most searched. Um, rising or trending queries are those that have seen the biggest increase in volume for the time range selected. Um, and the way that is worked out is it's compared against the equivalent previous period. So if you were looking at searches for the last over the last month um, and you, you were looking at trending searches, it's going to show you um, searches that have had a big jump in the last 30 days compared to the previous 30 days. Um, generally speaking, I guess, uh, trending queries are a good indication of sort of currency or popularity in real time, um, while top or most search queries show volume, so they're a better indication of magnitude or scale. Um, yeah, I think I, I mentioned before, um, comparing against weather and news as a benchmark. Um, but depending on the angle of your story, uh, you might preference using trending terms over, um, over top searched. Uh, another filter, you can, so you can also filter by Google product. The default option is web search. And generally speaking, you'll get the most robust um, data from web search, but you can also see search data for image, uh, news, YouTube, and Google shopping searches. Um, it's important, just a general note, I guess, it's important to, to know the limitations of any data set you're working with so that you don't draw um, false conclusions or exaggerate the results. Um, so I, I always like to mention the things that you can't do <laughs> with trends data. Um, the main thing is that you can't, or I guess the main two things are that you can't demonstrate absolute volume of searches and you also can't, call, uh, can't draw conclusions about demographics. So we don't know things like the age of people searching, their race or gender. Um, one sort of workaround for that is um, like, uh, for instance, we can't say... Um, every night at 1 a.m. parents search for how to put my child to sleep. But we can say every night at 1 a.m. search interest spikes for how to put my child to sleep. Um, and you can kind of deduce by the sentiment and the language, there's probably parents searching for that. Um, we just can't actually say that. <laughs> um, Sometimes it's hard to analyze sentiment too because topics and people that are controversial tend to be highly searched um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that people like or endorse them. So, you know, Donald Trump is a prime example, extremely, extremely highly searched, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people in Australia who are searching for him um, endorse him or like him. Um, so, yeah, you do have to be careful with drawing conclusions, especially around like, anything political, um, elections, that sort of stuff. Um, limitations aside, though, trends is still, I think, a very useful gauge of um, people's curiosities and general interest and a good way of showing changes in um, what has piqued people's curiosity over time. Um, it's also, I think, a helpful tool for journalists um, in terms of identifying new and emerging points of interest. Um, I know we're, we've got like two minutes left, um, so I might just do one example here. Um, so this is a story I worked on with um, a journo from the ABC 
um, at Triple J and um, he was doing a story on um, conspiracy theories and looking at um, some, you know, in specifically in relation to coronavirus. And um, I initially came across a series of sort of 5G centric searches, looking at trends in the back end. Um, but it's the sort of thing that you can also uh, stumble across if you're looking at trends and monitoring a specific portfolio area regularly. Um, so yeah, for instance, this, I think this was like late March, early April. And, um, in, um, in that trending widget that I mentioned down the bottom, the lists, um, looking at coronavirus searches and related searches around that, you could see, um, 5G health concerns was a spiking or a trending um, search. So again, that's like maybe another good example of where you would look for trending searches as opposed to most search. So even though um, the majority of people searching for coronavirus at that time were searching for weren't searching for um, misinformation in the trending searches, you could see that spike. Um, so it's yeah, it's good if you're looking at trends regularly. You'll you sort of start to familiarize yourself with the things that are regularly searched around um, specific topics. Um, and then when anomalies come up, like 5G health concerns, it stands out. Uh, I'll just skip through these because we've slightly run out of time. A couple of handy tips and hacks. Um, I think um, one more piece of advice. Oh. Sorry, I might just jump in. If, um, if, if you do need to kind of dash off uh, for any reason, feel free to do so. Um, and we will get this video to you at the end so Anna doesn't feel like she has to kind of cram it all in. Um, but yeah, feel, feel free to leave if you need to and we'll, we'll make sure we get this video to you. Awesome, thanks, Neil. Um, in that case, maybe I'll just toggle back. So um, this story is probably is a good example of how state-based data can be used. Um, it was a Canberra Times story which ran last year about um, how services Australia employees were being inundated with JobKeeper and JobSeeker claims. Um, as you can hopefully see from the screenshot, the journalists opted for a few different expressions of trends data. So we have the line chart, which is comparing spikes for JobKeeper and JobSeeker, um, a column graph showing a breakdown of searches by state, which you could just download um, directly from the, uh, the map widget. Um, and she also included a list of top trending questions, um, which she got from, from me. You can sometimes see trending questions in the, um, in the related searches list, but, um, uh, if not, you can always email me and I'll help you out. Um, so yeah, I guess sort of by using all three, um, you can kind of paint a pretty compelling picture of not just what people are searching, but when and where they're searching most. Um, this example is, um, I guess, a, it's a good example of how you can use trends to find a fresh angle on an existing story in the news cycle. Um, so as you probably remember, um, in 2019, um, the Uluru climb was banned and um, there was a, like the kind of primary story in the news cycle at the time was how everyone, all these tourists were flocking to climb it and um, it was against the traditional owner's wishes and um, uh, this um, news.com.au journal reached out and was like, "Is you know, have we got another take on this? And um, so what I did was looked at um, the most searched questions around Uluru over time um, and uh, basically found that most people like overwhelmingly were interested in the geography of it and the geology. Um, so I think from memory the the most searched question was um, how is how was Uluru formed? Um, closely followed by like how how much of Uluru is under the ground. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. I think just an example of how you can find like a slightly different angle um, to say that actually far more people um, are interested in 
the geology of it than they are interested in climbing it. And we were able to sort of um, quantify how, you know, how sort of how many more searches were being made for um, geology and geography uh, than um, questions around the climb. So, yeah. Um, Back to my tips and hacks. So my, I think my number one piece of advice is to really just hop on the site and have a play around with it. Um, the more you sort of familiarise yourself, the, the easier it is to understand um, and the more you'll get a feel for, um, you know, what works and what doesn't. Um, I would highly recommend checking out our daily um, real-time trends page, which is... Uh, not that. That's the wrong link. One second. Here we go. Um, so this, uh, basically from, um, from the home page, you can come up to this little menu, um, in the left-hand corner and select trending searches and that'll take you to the real-time trends page. You can see daily search trends, uh, as well as real time, and you can change location here. Um, that's just good if you're, just, I guess, generally looking for a sense of um, what people are searching um, day in, day out, um, as opposed to, you know, if you have a specific topic in, in mind. Um, you can also, via this menu here, come down to subscriptions um, and set up alerts to monitor trends for a particular region or specific subjects um yeah and you can set the frequency um just by adding them in and and um it i think it just gets sent to your directly to your inbox um so that's quite handy if you're i don't know if you're a health reporter you can set up a bunch of like health related topics um and you'll get um yeah, you'll get a little notification once a week or as it happens. Um, another useful thing is, again, sort of looking at by topic. Um, that's weird that that's come up as musical genre. <laughs> um, let's go how to. This is what I actually wanted. Oh, no, no, no. Huh. That's strange. That's changed. That should be that should say how to as a topic, but maybe it's been morphed into do it yourself. Um, so you can use um, you can use this categories uh, filter to look for. Um, let's go finance um, to look for specific. Um, questions let me use a search term um specific questions via topic so if you wanted you know top oh, this is not working um let's try past seven days sorry i don't know why that didn't come up okay that's better so um you can find sort of like the top how-to searches by uh, against like broad categories. Um, so down here in the past seven days, the top trending how-to related search on finance is how to shell sales, how to, how to sell <laughs> shells by the seashore, how to sell shares on Comtech, how to retire early, how many weeks in a year, that seems unrelated. Um, how to avoid capital gains tax, et cetera. Um, so that can be quite useful if you're, again, just sort of looking, fishing for sort of a broad um, uh, uh, angle um, by topic. Um, how are we going for time, Neil? A little, a little um, yeah, we're going good. Um, if you've got a, a few more things to do. Um, and I think what's really cool about what you've done there is it's basically, um, you know, you're kind of fishing where the fish are, aren't you? You're basically able to write stories that are um, already lining up with what people are trying to um, find out about. So, yeah, so that's really, right. really cool. 
<laughs> Sorry, my cat just crawled across my laptop and I had to move him. <laughs> um, I mean, related issues over here myself. So. Yeah. <laughs> the joys of working from home. Um, okay, so the other thing, sometimes, um, sometimes in trends you'll enter a topic and the, the data um, looks a bit patchy or you can't find um, a topic that matches the keyword that you've put in. So, um, for example, um, looking for franking credits, all, the only option you get is search term, um, which just doesn't really make any sense. Um, and so, and uh, you can sort of see here, the data looks a bit limited. It, may, it looks like in the past five years, <laughs> no one in the Northern Territory has searched for franking credits. Um, and so something I like to do when I'm like, mm, that doesn't really check out, is um, actually go to Google search um, and type the term in. And sometimes you'll see this little, um, it's like a little topic suggestion box on the side where it says dividend imputation. So that's basically, um, a, like a snapshot from the knowledge graph, which I mentioned at the start, um, and that'll give you the specific name um, that corresponds with the topic. So now if we go back to trends and we put in dividend imputation, we can see we've got a topic and you can also see that um, search interest is much more, or the data is much more robust for the topic than it is for franking credits. Um, uh, last but not least, and this is quite handy, you can see what's been trending over a longer period of time without using a topic at all. Um, so the way to do that is to, when you um, land on the page, first enter a topic, um, and then you can go to the three little dots and hit remove, and then it'll show you based on the time frame and location parameters, we've got Australia in the past 30 days, these are the overall top trending topics on the left and the overall top trending searches. Um, you can also then toggle to see um, most searched overall. So again, if you're, if you're looking for um, a bit of like a benchmark comparison to see, you know, say um, how highly searched uh, Christian Porter is, um, in the last 30 days, maybe you'd do Christian Porter compared with the weather. So we can go just click on him there and then type in weather as a comparison. So yeah, you can see there's there's still quite a significant spike for him, but not quite um, not quite as interesting as whether it's going to be sunny today or not. <laughs> um, so that's that's about it. That they have I've covered the basics of trends. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask now. Or if you go away and have a play around with um, the tool and and have questions later on, um, by all means, uh, get in touch. My email is on screen. Um, I also do bespoke data requests for journalists. So if you ever have um, uh, a particular request or want to collaborate on a trends driven story, um, please reach out. And um, we also have at our, um, uh, on our um, Google News Initiative website, we've got training modules. If you ever need a refresher on trends, there are a bunch of other training modules on there which are fabulous. Um, and that's linked on screen. Um, you can also sign up. We do, I do a weekly trends newsletter for Australia. Um, that link is a little bit annoying, so I might just um, copy it and drop it in the chat for ease. Um, but yeah, feel free to sign up and um, you'll have me popping up in your inbox once a week. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, did anyone have any questions? Just quickly, Anna. The Probably from a regional point of view, um, just the regional data you mentioned there, being able to get to a city level um, data in terms of local local stories. Obviously, the the national, the state trends are great, but but obviously we want to look at the analytics and look at how we can use that material to try and localize a story. Um, the breakdown does that give us 
give us some, some some specific analytics there with regards to our our localities and municipalities or what 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 to what degree does the breakdown yeah um unfortunately not via the public trends tool but if you wanted um something that was more city level you can always email me and i can have a look for you um i guess what i would say is because trends is based on sampling um sometimes areas that have um very very small populations um are, are a bit limited in terms of the data that's available um not always though so it's it's worth an ask um mm. i guess yeah just with the caveat that um because it is a sample of like all searches made um sometimes yeah smaller um like regional and rural towns um, just, yeah, have insufficient data to really draw meaningful um, insights from. But um, by all means, yeah, drop me a line. Um, I'd say like with um, broader topics, um, we can usually uh, extract data, but um, if it's, yeah, if it's really specific and super niche, um, chances are <laughs> a little bit slimmer. All right, thank you. No worries. Thanks, any Jeff. Other any other quick? Yeah, sorry. Any other questions? It can be a lot. It's a, a lot of information to take in sometimes. So if you, yeah, if you have a question down the track, just um, reach out. Thanks, Anna. Um, and also thanks for doing the acknowledgement of country as well. It's much appreciated. Um, no thanks, um, thanks also to, uh, uh, to Miguel for taking us through those newsroom tools. Um, it, as you can see, it's really difficult to, to get you across those sorts of tools in a short period of time. Um, but we really wanted you guys to have a sense of what's possible. Um, and I think we, hopefully we, we sort of achieved that today. Um, you can book more time with Miguel to go through um, all of those things or one of those things. Um, as Miguel said, he could spend an hour on sun calc if you want to. If you want to do that, um, and Anne is also available to go through stuff in more detail and, and as she's mentioned, uh, help you out with uh, more specific requests um, on email. Um, and if you want training on any of that stuff as well, we're, we're obviously here and, and available to do that sort of training in your newsrooms as well. So uh, always bear that in mind. Um, we've gone a little bit over, so uh, I, I will kind of wrap things up now, but um, I was gonna make the suggestion that um, if you did wanna get started on a couple of things that have been mentioned, um, setting up a Google alert for your name is a good thing to do. Uh, it obviously picks up all your bylines, but also wherever you're mentioned on the internet. So. Maybe there's a Reddit thread that's kicking off around one of your stories that you want to be across. Uh, that's a good thing to do straight up. Um, also, just alerts around issues that you might be covering. So uh, maybe the Murray Darling Basin is a is a big issue in your in your area or um, something like that. Um, Google Alerts are, uh, are really powerful for that as well. Um, not sure if you can hear the little baby Galar in the background screaming for dinner, but that's my toddler. Um, uh, in terms of trends as well, um, maybe there's a, a, a way of finding a unique story for you. So uh, something that came to mind for me when Anna was talking was um, around searches for hand sanitizer. So maybe there's been a drop in Victoria in the, in the past couple of weeks or uh, or in whatever state you're in as, as the rollout of vaccinations begin. Um, that can start to show you, show you how comfortable people are uh, as we're starting to move through that process. Um, and just for fun, I will send through an image that you can do in a reverse image search on, and we'll have a chat about that next session. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to tell me where that photo was taken, on what device it was taken on, and anything else that you can get from the metadata there uh, using one of those tools that Miguel mentioned. Um, look, that's it for the week. Um, we did go a little bit over, but hopefully that it was uh, useful for you. I always learn something from, from these guys every time they present. So. Um, thank you both again, and thank you all for your time. See you next time. Cheers. Thanks Yay. for organising, Neil. Pleasure. See you. Bye-bye.